Creality K1. Great for the ABS because it is enclosed, but PLA needs more cooling, so maybe the K1 SE is better for the PLA. Let's find out. Welcome back. This is Creality K1, fast correct side printer, and thanks to its enclosed structure, it is great for the ABS or similar technical filaments. Yes, it has a smaller volume, but if this volume is enough for you, in that case it has the advantage because smaller volume is faster for heating. Of course, for the PLA we need a lot of cooling, and in this case it is recommended minimum to leave the doors open, but here we have the warning on the top that uh, if the room temperature exceeds 30 degrees Celsius, then we have to remove the top cover too. Early products have some issue with the extruder, this is from the second wave, and I have zero issues with it. On the other side we have the Creality K1 SE, which don't have these side panels, and we already saw this earlier with Bamboo Lab X1C versus P1P, but there the cutting was much bigger, for example that screen and similar, so here basically according to specifications there is no big difference between two printers, only don't have those side panels. Of course the main reason for the Creality was not to create a PLA friendly printer, but to cut the price, but I'm curious, so the main question I want to answer in this video, if the K1 SE is better for the PLA, or there will be no big difference in the quality. And from this quality I want to check the overhangs and the bridging, and since my SP08 enclosure testing video, I notice more stringing if it is too hot, so these three things I want to test in this video. This box is sent to me by the Creative 3D official. They also sent me the K1 Max, so big thanks to them that they make these videos and comparisons possible. I place an Amazon link down in the description to their store. Similar to K1, this also arrives almost completely assembled. We have some tools here in the box, uh, spool holder, screen, and this is the sample filament on the spool, which is big plus, 200 grams of the Hyper PLA. The assembling is very simple and very important step is removing the securing bolts, they are marked with these yellow arrows. The spool holder on the back side. On the screen we have the warning to check the voltage if it is set correctly to our country. It's a little bit hard to see inside, but in my case it is correct, 230 volts, because I'm in Europe. In US you should set this to 115. And final step is installing the screen. Before I turn it on, I can immediately see a few differences. First of all, of course, they don't have the panels, but it also don't have the exhaust fan. And I can see some differences in the build plate. These are so-called A plates, and in both cases we have the warning to use the glue stick on the surface. Sometimes for the better adhesion, but in most cases to avoid too strong adhesion. And it is only one-sided. But on the SE we have this nozzle cleaner. So probably I cannot use the same G-code. For the testing I want to have the same circumstances, so I'm placing here the plate A. But this is far my favorite. I also noticed some differences in the extruder and uh, its cable and teflon tube. So here we have much higher profile and with this the path of the filament is smoother compared to K1 because here we have more bendings, but uh, we need this for the lower profile because here we have the top cover. Even if I want to add the enclosure for K1 SC, side panels and the door installation will be easy, but for the top cover we have to install that drag chain. Or we can DIY some higher cover. And also I thought that there is a bigger difference on the extruder that we have different stepper motors, but actually the difference is so far I could notice that uh, here we don't have this plastic cover, which we can see on the K1. But I don't really care about the aesthetics, so to me this only means that uh, this is easier for the maintenance and also less heating of the stepper motor. On the website I can see that it uses a little bit different hot end than the nozzle, because now we have that uh, quick swept nozzle. And one important thing, I'm recording this much later, that now we don't have this AUX fan, which is extremely important for the PLA printing. First I have to select the language, and after this the network. Now it starts with the self-check and this is fully automatic calibration and we don't have to do anything here except removing this black foam. Now it's doing the EPO shaping and don't worry these noises are normal in this process. And the last step in this automatic process is the auto leveling. It cannot move independently the lead screws but it will create some kind of offset matrix and it will compensate any inaccuracy along the z-axis. 
self check is completed and it is cooling down the nozzle now and I will do the same procedure on K1 because it is now moved from the basement here and the both printers I will upgrade the firmware because it is different now and I want to have the same circumstances as much as possible what it has currently the latest version okay the bridging test from the printer brass from 10 up to 100 millimeters of bridging and this is the printing and I try to catch the bridging moment and it looks okay the next one is the overhang test in four direction and actually this is how we have to check the overhangs wow this has to be too much overhang because the material curls up and nozzle hit the objects almost every time this is why the zip-up is extremely important for these printings, but even then, the, this has to be too much. Nice, it was finished. I will analyze it later. The stringing test starts with bigger diameters, and when we go higher, there is a bigger chance for the stringing. I hope I will see some stringing at the end to have some difference between two printers. <laughs> okay, I can see a few strings at the end. Three basic test objects are printed, and I'm moving the spool to the SE. It is extruding on the other side and it looks like it was tested with some orange filament. Now I have a small problem because I got this printer so early that it is not included in the Creality Slicer um, and I'm not sure if there is any G-code required to handle this nozzle cleaner so just in case I will use this A-plate from the other printer. Of course if I use the K1 G-code there are some lines which enable or disable this I'll expand but uh, it will be ignored here. I'm repeating the same objects. This is the bridging test. I think this object will give us the best picture which 3D printer is better for the PLA. The stringing test. The result of the bridging test, the S is always on the left side. On the top it looks equal, but the other side is more important. And here basically I cannot see any bigger difference between them. Maybe if I watch this side, the biggest bridging, in that case, maybe the K1 is slightly better. The stringing test looks very equal to me, maybe just one or two more strings I can see on SC version, which is on the left side. And now the overhang test from the bottom, because here we can see the differences. And this is the front side, which looks very equal. On the right side, we can see some differences. And here, actually, the K1 is better, because it was closer to the AUX fan. But on the left side, when it was farther, in this case, the SE is better. And the back side looks equal in both cases. On white color, it is hard to check the print quality, so I'm moving to this orange. This is PLA Plus 2.0 by Salu. The horns will give us the most information about this printing. We can see some stringing, maybe critical overhang, part calling checking, and similar. Cute rabbit from the printables, and the critical overhang under the head is finished. The Kali Dragon, the S is on the left side and a very equal overhang here under the head and also the back side of the horns looks equal. On this rabbit we can observe two things. One is this overhang below the head and here I can see slightly better on the K1 compared to the SE but the difference is very minimal. I'm not sure if it is visible on the camera too. No stringing between ears so otherwise these two bunnies are very equal. At the beginning I was quite sure that the K1 SC will be better for the PLA, but the final result is that it is not worse. The final result is very equal. I totally forgot that the K1 has that side uh, AUX fan, and also if you want you can enable the exhaust fan to suck out that hot air. And thanks to this actually the K1 is also very good for the PLA, but don't forget you have to open the doors, and if it is uh, hotter in that uh, room then you have to remove the top cover too. So why would you choose the K1 SE instead of the K1? Well, the main reason will be the price difference, see? and if you print only PLA PETG, in that case this will do the job and it's much cheaper. And the second reason is that newer hot end and that quick set nozzle, because this nozzle is a little bit expensive, but if you want to replace it, then it is much simpler, we don't have to do that uh, hot tightening, which is always critical for the beginner users. If you find this video useful and you would like to get notifications about similar videos, don't forget to click the notification bell button too, because in most cases the notification about my new uploads is sent only to those who enable that all notifications. In most cases my regular subscribers are not informed. Just keep in mind if you would like to get the notifications. 
If you have some other experience, write down in the comment section. Thank you for watching and happy printing.